Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Film Seizure. Chuck's there. He's he's guzzling some cerveza cristal. Cerveza uh, cristal! <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Hi, Chuck. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. And then we have Chuck. Or not? Oh, yeah. We yes, I'm Chuck. also here. <laughs> how are you, everybody? There are two Chucks and one Chuck. <laughs> two Chucks in there. It's one the Chuck apocalypse. Leaves. So we've grown two of me. <laughs> I've got really bad at this. Um, and then we've got Jeff. You hear him laughing. Jeff, say hello. Hello. Today. <laughs> You are listening. <laughs> you are listening to the the ultimate the the conclusion of our March Madness month. We are discussing and ruminating on 2015's Mad Max Fury Road. You've 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 joined us for um, for four weeks now as we've broken down and discussed. All of the Mad Max universe in anticipation of this year's Furiosa. And today we're going to talk about the movie that directly informs Furiosa, Mad Max Fury Road. This is a pretty yeah. good movie, huh, guys? Um, yeah, it's all right. I like it a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. It's um, uh, second most Oscar nominations in the year that it was uh, out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a technical marvel, right? Yeah, like, it won the most that year too. Yeah, it won uh, pretty much every technical award, if I remember correctly. It was nominated for ten, won six. Um, yeah, that's insane. Yep. Yeah, I had no idea. It was also nominated for best picture. Um, this was one of the first years, maybe the first year they expanded to ten. Um, it was early on. Yeah, um, yeah. I think and it was this nominated. Was yeah, but no, it's um Yeah. Uh Survey Soccer. Really <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I thought you needed rescuing my oh, beer commercial. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, so this movie, all right. Um this is the only Mad Max movie I've seen in the theater, or at least saw in the theater when it when it was new. Um yeah. I saw this movie three times in the theater i i didn't know what to expect of this i mean it's 30 years after thunderdome it's mad max well out way beyond thunderdome <laughs> 30 years beyond uh it's it's mad max without mel gibson because well mel gibson did mel gibson things well mel and, gibson's uh, also mm, quite old <laughs> i yeah, mean 30 years on this would have been a good movie for him to be old in though i think i think he yeah. could have i think he could have done it i don't i don't think that age is a reason he's not in this movie um i wasn't sure what to think of this right um but holy hell like seeing this in the theater was akin to a journey to valhalla it was yeah. like it blew me the hell away. I couldn't believe what this movie was. Um, you know, you kind of heard rumblings of this movie being made, this Mad Max movie being made in the in the uh, the desert, the bush of of Australia for years. I think this movie was in production for something like five or six years. Oh, off there was and like on. a good six years off, I think, from yeah. what I remember. Like yeah. Charlie Charlie Theron gave up almost half a decade to this movie, yeah. right? Um, and half her arms. And, and half her they arms. just cut them right off. Cut them right <laughs> off. <laughs> it was. T it was kind of like. Well, I mean, all right. The trailers look pretty good. This is. This is Tom Hardy. Is like Tom Hardy. Is he going to be all right? Um, and ultimately, you know, it's not a Mad Max. It is a Mad Max movie, but it is so. Of all of the movies, Mad Max is is the secondary character to his to his to the title in this one i mean you can make a case for him being the the hero and the and the primary character in the first three movies this one not so much he's definitely a secondary character or at least a parallel character to charlie's theron's Fur furiosa in this to the, to the, to point, the lesser degree war boy the war boy sure sure yeah yeah i mean With but, but even even, story, even right? when it comes to like credit in this movie it's 
it's Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron on screen at the same time, credited yeah. at the same time. Like, it is, it is their movie. George right? Miller doing it right. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just, this is about the fastest two hours you'll spend in your life. It's, it it's, really a time, is. it's a time machine, this movie. It just, it's completely enveloping and enthralling. I've seen this, I don't know, maybe half a dozen or more times at this point, and I still just get sucked into it. And two hours later, it's over, and it's like, where did that time go? It is completely there's a, engrossing. There's a joke in my house that, and it's not even really a joke, it's kind of true. Like, at 30 minutes into anything we're watching together, I have to pause it and go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's always like 29 to 31 minutes. <laughs> this movie, I was watching alone this time. It was like 57 <laughs> and I was like, holy you shit. You made it twice the amount of time. Yes, yeah. because yeah. this movie, it, it's weird. I probably had to go, but it just, it flies. It really flies. It's kind of an anomaly. Um, and, it, it, and it is kind of a um, a tale of two halves, too. Because an hour in, I know exactly when you use the bathroom. Yeah. Because there's a perfect break for that. Um, Because it's like the first, the first half is the chase out. And the second half is the is kind of the meeting the the um, the women from the green place the, the the many mothers. Yep. And then it's the chase back, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, to add on a little bit more about like the casting around this, right? Yeah. Um. So in the early two thousands, uh, Fox was going to make this movie with uh with George Miller, and Gibson was set to star. There was a uh, Sigourney Weaver was talked about as far as far as being Furiosa. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, what year? Gibson in, uh, around 2000, 2001 was oh, when they wow. were going into pre-production for it. Oh, wow. um, actually went into pre-production, but then September 11th shut a lot of stuff down because of travel and all that. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but no, a uh, year of living dangerously, uh, Gibson and Weaver worked together. So yeah gibson was like hey i want to do that again uh -huh. um and then so then that shut down for a little bit after uh 9 11 and then uh miller had to then he was committed to happy feet which turned out winning him an oscar anyway so the so, man has had such a varied career we're it gonna really talk about him again here in a couple of months we are but, um and another one of those kid movies yeah that that works for everybody uh but anyway so then um the passage of time made both miller and gibson basically say gibson's too old at this point okay um then in march of 20 or 2009 there was talk of an of an anime inspired movie i and, remember that talk yeah um which was going to be kind of the same movie sort of uh, but then they decided in around 2009, um, or no, they were going to decide at that point to go ahead and do a live action movie. So they, and with Gibson being too old at that point, Miller then went to, there was Hardy, Army Hammer. Oh God. Oh, uh, dodge the bullet there. <laughs> um, Jeremy Renner, Michael oh. Fassbender, Fassbender, Joel Kinnaman. Keith Ooh. Ledger, Eric Bana, and Eminem were the finalists. Eminem would have been hilarious. Eric Eric Bana and um, Heath Ledger, both of those would have been really good. Yeah, really good. The, Ledger uh, would have been outstanding. I think. As yeah, yeah. The funny thing like, is, would have been really good. Yeah. The uh, Eminem took himself out of the running because he didn't want to leave the United States. <laughs> What's funny is well, he has the initials too. That's weird. Mad yeah. Max. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> that's weird. That is, man, Joel Kinnaman, he's one of those guys who just, I just don't think people like. He's, he's been some iconic characters. He was Robocop for Christ's sake. I just don't pe think people like Joel Kinnaman. He doesn't have the charisma. Fastbender would have been interesting. Renner wouldn't have been right. I, I like keep I like keeping it Australian though. So Ledger or Banna would have been great. Hardy is okay. 
I, I like Hardy. I, I, I like I like Hardy a lot. I, I I like him. I would say a lot. I have okay. problems with his articulation. I you know one thing I like about him is that he one of the things that he does in a lot of his movies. Um, I like how he sometimes like kind of has an upper body acting when he says his lines he'll kind of lean into it yeah or he will um or he'll he'll use like a certain head twitch to be kind of like almost dubious of something that somebody is saying or trying to nail a point i i, I like that about him i like his i think his face acting is great in this and i'll, I'll say too. one thing i'll say one thing about jason saying he just likes tom hardy to the tom hardy fans out there that's bait that's bait <laughs> we can't hear you right now jason yeah you went on me can't, you can't hear you couldn't hear me just like i can't hardly hear tom hardy um, <laughs> that's that, i told i turned to susan after we watched that and i was like man who would have thought that that would have turned into the the viral meme it became like holy I mean, it's moly. perfection really. it is perfection it really is like holy crap um no i don't i don't not like tom hardy I sometimes find him difficult to understand. I think that's perpetuated by him have been in being in a Christopher Nolan movie, but I get it. Like even I, I even, always I've always had trouble with him. Even no, in No, that's yeah. not true. You had no problem with him in Nemesis. In Star Trek Nemesis. Well he, kind he is of very over, verbose in he, that. He over enunciates <laughs> in that. Yeah. yeah which I, which, to, which I which I appreciate. He's yeah. impersonating Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, he's purposefully over enunciating though. Yes. Um, I did not say do, you did. do more I, of that. Um, just to say, I did not say you didn't like him. I said, you only like him just to make sure that's clear. I represented what you said. I, I, I think that, that Heath Ledger or Banna would have been unbelievable. Now, of I, course, Ledger, I, Ledger had passed by now. Um, and Banna is kind of his, his popularity had waned he's another one of those guys who just never really connected well, with audiences if he was an option at the time and he got this role maybe he wouldn't have but who knows maybe but no no i mean i it's it's like the slightest of knocks like i this is a five-star movie for me i want to get that out of the way like i adore this movie um but i sometimes just have tiny little quibbles with tom hardy <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And that's all I'm going to say on the matter, because I think he does do some really cool stuff in this, especially his physical acting. Yeah, he's great. Physical, yeah. for sure. Um, so, I don't know. How should we how should we approach this? There is a huge, there is a really complex world built. Maybe we should talk about what the world is and what Morton movie. Joe is doing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, is, this is the most... Um, I'm I'm using this term to say how different it is, not like, not like literally, but this is the most alien world of the of this. Like, yeah, you can yeah. kind of see how a barter town could operate. Right. Like, even if right. you're looking at something in a historical sense, you can understand how something like that could operate. Like, you there's can there's a caste system at play here in in in, in uh, Thunderdome, but. There are rules, very simple rules that make sense. Yeah, yeah. that everybody abides by. And, and the yeah. whole, I mean, and the, and the idea of there just being an outpost like that yeah, makes sense. Sure. Yep. Um, yep. I mean, <laughs> it, it, the American frontier had outposts like sure. that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, we can we can see that in our relative kind of short uh, history, you know, in all all things considered. But this, the people are weird. <laughs> the world is weird and you don't fully understand exactly how you got there, but that it was so, so deteriorated that this is where we got. And that's what and, makes it so alien. And this is, I think, I think that the timeline that Miller is establishing with Furiosa is where this movie makes more sense with how civilization has degressed is that the right word mm -hmm. um 
because of the fallout. The the di- yeah, digress, I guess. The it, physical, the, the, the nuclear fallout is yeah. a is a is a really big thing in this movie. You get like Chuck mentioned last week. You get the little little hint of that with the radioactive water in the last movie, but in this movie, like r- yeah, we are now seeing generationally that humanity is kind of fucked because of radiation contamination it's a uh, it's not well, a problem that's going away yeah and the one of the first things you see from uh from a morton joe is his is the boils from yeah radiation yeah uh he's a he's a pretty gnarly character yeah yeah i mean that's um toe cutter yeah well, yeah. and what I like about it is, though, he does get out in the mix. He does mix it up. So at least, you know, as, as messed up as his body is, he's out there. He's out there. And he's got a bloated fat fuck of a, of a fuel uh, um, economist. <laughs> There's also something about him where he, he has at least some idea of maybe the people down there are just a lost cause. And I, I know this is not a, like a very moral stance to 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 make, but of getting in the mind of a Morton Joe, the people below him are riddled with mutations and radiation sickness. Right? He is he is trying to populate maybe the repopulate society through his his wives by um. But I don't know. I don't know how you reconcile that with him either. Like, is his I would, would he have radioactive babies? I mean, he did have one who was like a like a mutant, like half man, right? Well, he's I mean, much he was, older though, so it's probably yeah. Could have been. His, he's probably sick too. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't know. I I look. He's at trying him. to create his own utopia, and 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 in some ways, like become his own god figure. Right. Well, I think that's I think that's more it than I don't think he thinks of the people below as lost causes. I think he thinks of them as worshipers. Yeah. So he controls that by controlling the water, the most important yeah. thing on the planet at this point. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, the, um, he is he, he I think he is trying to build himself as a uh, well, the whole thing is, I mean, He's got, he's, he's got, I think he is trying to figure, uh, figure into, into this, a, a godlike figure where his war boys are like his angels. Sure. Sure. You know, uh, who go out and do like all of this stuff. He has this very select few, um, treasured women that he yeah. is birthing a, a you know some sort of savior out of right yeah right right um and then the people underneath and people on the on the ground are just they are there to worship him and that's and and that's how he keeps them in line is by you know keeping the water from them. but i mean but i mean those people those those people's days are numbered oh absolutely um, well they're I they're mean, partially numbered because of a morton joe Par- true partially sickness i'm sure but mostly probably a morton joe yeah, he's the cancer in this, you know. But I mean, but I mean, it, there will be a day in the not in the not too distant future where there won't be anyone to worship him, right? Yeah, it'll just be him and his on his oasis cliff with his wives and war boys. Well, but his war boys will worship him. True, that's true. I mean, it is. A, it, there are different levels of worship going on. But here, you, you almost know. wonder, like, why does he even bother to give them water, any water? They don't. They do nothing for him. I think. Him, I think it makes himself feel. Like I guess, he's, like, like, well, he's like a benevolent god. The the, the megalomania that feeds yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I do think you know we talked about like we have the three main characters of this movie is you have. Um, you have Max, you have Furiosa, who are opposites of one another. Sure. Furiosa yeah. believes in something that is almost, um, it's almost over hoping for, for an outcome. Whereas Max has no hope. He has negative hope because he even says at one point to Furiosa, this is what hope gets you. you know, yeah. Yeah. 
dead yeah. friends. Hope basically. is futile. Is yeah, what it's, it's, absolutely. And so, and then, but he you have is, nuts. Max at this point is reduced to a single instinct survival. Yep. That's it for Max. And uh, and Nux is kind of perfectly halfway between them, right? Where he's trying to find what he should be fighting for. And he has faith. He has faith. And, and but he is also, he is the one who, I mean, he absolutely grows the most out of those three. It does. Well, that's an interesting thing because the, the Half-Life War Boys, these are, you know, young children grown and groomed by Morton Joe who have no future because of their the tumors that are growing on their bodies from nuclear exposure, radiation exposure, right? So he or Morton Joe uses that to leverage his deity to to give them something to believe in, right? It's it's almost like, well, you know, my my I'm I'm dead no matter what, he, Morton Joe gives them a purpose, right? And he also has um, to give a them blood. Purpose, but yeah. Yeah. And, and the blood, the blood is what keeps them alive for as long as possible, right? Clean blood. Yeah. Yeah. It, un, 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 unradiated blood. Yeah. And um, yeah. So the movie begins with kind of flashes uh, of what Max is haunted by. Yeah. Which is a little bit of three movies kind of compressed into one vision. Yeah. I want to talk about this. What What do you, what do you, what's your all take on this? I have a little bit of a take, but. Well, I think, I mean, I, I think he's just kind of, I, I put my neck out there for people and it's never worked out. Yeah. And and because of that he's blank he's it's all well, kind of playing back to the whole almost faith or religious based idea. He's he is constantly what do they call it? Uh, self-flagellating. Flag flagellate. Flagellation, right? I'm just yeah, like, like Ed Harris and uh, yeah. Night Riders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. he's constant like he is always haunting himself with that concept of what he failed. Or how he failed other people. Is that now, what you're actually asking, Jason? Well, I'm asking within the canon. What is it that haunts him? Uh, because in all the all the movies leading up to this, Road Warrior, um, Thunderdome, he he saves the day. Sure, people die along the way, but he couldn't save everyone. But ultimately, they had good conclusions for. For the people he's trying to save. I think this Me, happens to him over and over and over again. I think I think that's part of it. I think th- he he's haunted by the ones he could not save that we don't hear the stories we haven't about. Heard that story. It's, yeah. Well, we know also, we know two people we he didn't save. I also think right. yes. I, that's where I was going to go. My 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 final kind of thought on this is it's Sprague, right? The one that the, his own child that he couldn't. He couldn't save. Yeah, I mean, certainly there is. A, there's a lot of imagery that looks like that first one throughout yeah. this movie because yeah. we even see the eye bulge again once. Yes, we do. Yes, um, we do. Well, that was going to be my argument of why this is still Max. But uh-huh, just, well, yeah. I I have well, I how about this for a different take? What if <laughs> I love what this. if Max is more spiritual? And there's one very specific reason why I say that Max, this maybe is the same Max, but he kind of comes and goes in the world. Like literally, like he's sometimes there and sometimes he's not. And like some a of that specter? almost like a specter. Yeah. I just and, think he's traveling that's between where, place to place and that's why he's not anywhere. But well, I, but, uh, but no, what I mean, and like, well, you've taken that a little bit more literally. I know but, you're making it spiritual. I'm saying literal. Yeah. But I mean, but like it could, it, it could play up to the fairy tale element. It could play up to, um, it, it could play up to the timeline element and it could play up to a very specific thing that happens at the very end of this movie that doesn't spatially make sense but mm-hmm. does but happens 
Mm. Well, you're gonna have to bring that back up later. Then. Yeah, oh, I think done. you will. I think personally, will. I think Max is Max. Like, I will allow the like. I like the idea of you guys watching this and saying this is a fairy tale or this is, you know, there are multiple Maxes or whatever there is. I think that is left up to the viewer to take it however they want. Right. So for me personally, I think Max has endured all this. I think Max has failed more times than he's succeeded. We only know the hero, Max, because that's the stories that were told. Yeah. That's oh, the I way certainly, I... I certainly agree with you that he has failed more than he has succeeded because in this kind of world, you have to, right? Part of me, part of and me, it likes... would be the reason why he always is tries to stay hands, hands off and, and at a Not distance. Not get involved. Exactly. Yeah. But part of me also likes the, the idea that this Max is using the name, right? Like yeah. this Max has is haunted in the same way, perhaps, but it but but is is using the name because so it's like Spartacus because it's yeah kind of he's it's not the same thing but it's yeah. not the same thing but he 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 will he's inspired by the idea of max and what he represents and uses that inspiration for his own redemption or right? even since mad max is a legend using uh -huh. that name lets everyone know what you're about right right so i can i can buy that I, yeah it's, yeah well so the eye bulgy flashback you know that that kind of yeah it does sort of to me it makes me think it's him it, Right. I mean, because, yeah. yeah, that's the first movie, right? Why would yeah. he see the eye bulgy thing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that's I such mean, a minor detail. It's almost my whole that, argument. That's a, so that's yeah, a, that's a, that, with that. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's that, not I a mean, whole argument. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's, it, yeah, I mean, that's a stylistic <laughs> choice, it's right? It's a piece it's, of evidence. Yeah, right. but it's a stylistic choice. Exactly. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it could, like, like you were saying, it's like he's using the name. It's kind of like um, he has been around enough to where people have said you know hey you remind me of yeah this tale i've always heard you or he's so heard kind of, the tales yeah right. it, it's like it, it's like when somebody i mean again kind of going again with the more spiritual side of it how many times have you heard somebody called be called a messiah of some sort right yeah, yeah. well then you you know you are whether you want to live up to that or not Considering he doesn't want to give his name early, right? He gives the name after victory, right? He's like Max. My name is Max. Like that is cool. You know, there's yeah. something in that to me. He's that, living that is, up to the thing that somebody else told him he is. There's an ambiguity there that I love. Yeah, yeah. more yeah, than think, anything. I mean, more than anything, I think the name is. I mean, obviously, it's used to sell movies, but it's it's audience serving. Sure, because we sure. know who max is so yeah. we don't need to be informed maybe this 2015 movie needed to tell us a little more because there's a whole new generation of people watching it that have sure. probably yeah. never seen a max film before yeah but we know if you hear the name mad max you're like i don't need to know anything else right. i know what this guy is i know and i know and i know what i'm in for right right, right. yeah 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 right which is you know it's like what's going to be interesting about this new movie right yeah, is that yeah. It's a Mad Max tale, meaning yeah. that only builds the world. Uh -huh. We're having to follow a different character that we, well, we just are in, met. We are informed on who she is now. Well, we are, but we it's did like, just it's recently like Mad meet Max. Her. Well, I'm, gonna, I was, I was, I'm agreeing with you, yeah. and it's Mad Max in reverse. Yeah. yeah. Because we, should, we know where she's ended up. We don't know why she's there, besides a few sparse this, details she this shares. This, in some ways, is probably going to be the most continuity- that we've yeah. ever gotten in a direct continuity. At least. Yeah. In yeah. A, I hope in a they Mad place Max it movie. at a point we can relate to what's going on in another Mad Max movie. Would be Joe cool. is in this movie. Um, our, yeah. uh, uh, Rictus Erectus is in this movie for Furiosa. I mean, the, the characters from this, from Fury Road, are in Furiosa. Yeah. More is Bruce Spence one. still alive? Because I, God, I hope so. It'd be uh, hilarious he if he shows up as a pilot in it. <laughs> It'd be so good. <laughs> it would be good. I wish he was in this one. I don't know why he wasn't. Could have got him in there. What the heck? You had six years to make it. You can't get Bruce Spence for a couple days. Yeah, whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Bring him in. Yeah, Bring man, him Bruce. Man, man. <laughs> um, no, I like that. Um, 
Yeah, and then we meet, you know, it's like we get a whole new character, you know, with Chris Hemsworth's character. It'd be yeah. great if he talks yeah. about coming from Barter Town or something. I was just in Barter Town and they were yeah. Oh, that would be that would be cool. Yeah. You know, something I saw that this guy Max of, fight the blaster. Exactly. Oh, it was insane. That would be cool. See, that would, be cool. That would that set would be things cool. and it would be like yeah, uh, through that new character, we could learn a little bit more about what's going on with Max. Or if yeah. he's the black one. The black one, the dark one, excuse me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I did like a, a Stewie with like the upside down face. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the dark one, right? Is uh, from Chuck, the first one. Uh, our special <laughs> guest here, one. Mel Gibson. What do you have to say we- about this? <laughs> Oh my God! No, we I'm this. with you, Chuck. We absolutely have to get the dark one so at some point. This is my plea to you, George Miller. If you if it's not in Furiosa, if and you make another Mad Max movie, please get the dark one in. There. One of yes, yeah, such an interesting character. We don't know yes. anything about. It's like Boba Fett of the yeah. Mad Max universe. Yeah, yeah. Until yeah, they kind of screwed kind that of cool. all up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I could go for just like a little short, just like a little five minute short. Of the, of the dark, dark one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Just something. Just throw it as an extra onto the DVD or something, you know? I love it. I love it. Yep. What? Hey, All right. you know what, guys? Why don't we make that movie? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's do it. There it dark is. one. All right. So so what do we have? We've got Morton Joe up on his, his oasis cliff, controls all the water, all the vegetation. He has a bevy of wives. He has... um. Uh, some big old women who are perpetually lactating, who provide mother's milk. Um, and he's got his war boys who are his, uh, he's got them from young age all the way up to teen, 20 age. As long as they live their half life, uh, who are his warriors, his, um, his drivers, his, his, uh, what do they call them? Pole cats. His, um, yeah, I think so. His, uh, his, yeah, his warriors. I mean, in a, in a, in a well, he's got his doof also. He's got, he's his got doof the doof. Warrior. He's got the doof warrior who, I love um, that guy. who <laughs> shreds on the guitar. I love it so much. Have you guys ever seen the, the Conan O'Brien as the doof warrior? No, clip? but that's it amazing. Is fucking amazing. That's amazing. I love the way is. they use the doof warrior in this too. Like, so when you go by the car that he's on, the music gets louder. Yes. Yeah. And then it yeah. fades as you sound go. Sound design is really good in this It's movie. like yes. it won yep. an Oscar for sound mixing. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really well done. Um, I really like the score to this movie a lot, but I don't know if I like it better than than Thunderdome's score. I really like uh, Maurice Jarry's kind of like weird jazzy score to Thunderdome. So Brian May didn't do either of the next two. Did he passed by then? Yeah, he did not do. Yeah, I think he passed. I, did he even do Road Warrior? Did he do? I thought he did. It. We talked about him. I know Road he did. The first one. But yeah, Maurice Jarry, who, I mean, God, he's icon. He did um, Thunderdome. Really good score. And then the score for this was by Junkie XL. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because uh, Junkie XL has done some, some interesting stuff. Just to confirm one thing, Brian May did do two as he well. He did do two. Okay, cool. I like, I like his score for... Road Warrior a lot better than I like his score for Mad Max. Yeah, I just like the way the music is used in the film in this one. Yes, not so uh, much as what the score is. The dia- diegetic use yes. of music mm-hmm. in this is yes. really cool. Yeah, agreed. I always forget that term, but you guys always know it. Yep. <laughs> hey, uh, Junkie XL is doing. He did the last Godzilla vs King Kong. He's doing the new one too. And, no kidding. Okay, cool. And apparently he is doing um, Furiosa as well. Oh, all right, all right. He does. He it. does. He does a lot of uh, Warner Brothers films. I'm into it. Like I, I really like the percussive aspect of the score for this. It's very dry, driving, <laughs> right? If you if, got if, it, it kind of did. I got it. It kind of fits the the whole vibe of the movie, and it and it it yeah. crescendos when it needs to crescendo. It's um, it's very propulsive. Yeah, that dump truck with all the drummers on. Well, I don't know if it's a dump Fuck truck. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, it's they're all, they're all pounding up. on the drums. Yeah. Well, do foyers playing like shredded in front of them. They have the best view of him just shredding with his flame throwing guitar. Oh, it's so good. When I'm playing my music 
loud in the car. This is what I picture everyone else seeing me as. Yes. <laughs> Are you actually standing those. outside the car? And like, no, I have those people doing it for me. Oh, while I'm gotcha, gotcha. You're yeah. you're driving the do for you. Right? Yeah, I, I want to be witnessed. Yeah, yeah. That, witness me. <laughs> um. Okay. Maybe we should actually talk about the plot. Nah. What do you think? <laughs> So, so really, yeah. this is like a really fast first 10 minutes. Like the first 10 to 15 minutes of this movie is is a blur in a lot of ways. Like No Max, fat on this movie. There is no fat on this movie. And it's but, anti-Max too, right? Because the first chase, he's standing on the edge of a hill yeah. or a cliff. Um, he eats a two-headed lizard mm-hmm. that sneaks up on him. And then he's chased by the war boys. Yeah. Um, and you're like, oh. This is Max. This is going to be a 20 minute car chase that he escapes or wins in the end, but it's not. Nope. He gets flipped over. He gets taken out of his car and captured like immediately. And you're like, okay, yep. this is different. <clears throat> like, yeah, Max lost like immediately. Um, and they, 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 yeah, he does. And they take him into captivity and they, um, they tattoo his back with a bunch of information. It's almost Did like you your add- identification card. Yeah, this is really cool. Let me let me pull this up. I took a, sh- a picture of it. And I'm going to read what I can from it. Um, there's a lot of information on here, but a lot of the, the the early stuff on his back relates to his physical condition. Like he's got two good eyes. Um, I think like no, I th- basically like no um tumors i think is is essentially one of the things on here his piss is okay (laughs) Um, his genitals are intact yep right multiple scars heals fast like these are all things that they write on here his blood type is on here o negative the most important one universal donor right and it also says high octane and this is interesting because this is something that um is it Nux? Yeah, mentions yeah. like I've got that high octane blood making me crazy. So there's this there's this kind of correlation to the personality of the person to the type of blood that you're receiving, right? This is a road warrior's blood, right? And and that's like the best you could probably have if you're a war boy, right? Um, and they even call him on here tattoo on him road warrior run down the powder lane like maybe where they captured him i'm guessing and v8 is on there circled so that's his car type right and then there's something on here about um psychotic right (laughs) i don't know exactly and then muzzled so they've they've muzzled him well, but his, yeah, his his whole known history is is tattooed on his back. Really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. and uh, oh god, I love it when he like busts free and he's like and he's like he's about to run out of the uh, of the um, of like the little tube in the in the side of the plateau, and like all the war boys are like grabbing at him, and that's when you get the title. Yes, yes, it's like yeah, and uh, that's. Yeah, that ten minutes is. It's high all, octane. it's all, it's all, it's all shot. It's a shot differently too. It's like really high frame rate. Yep. So you've got a lot of that, um, just like really stark detail in the in the the water and the in the the yeah. dirt that's it kicked f- up. Feels like it's uh it's a little faster. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah. or at least as far as like the motion, like it probably it'd probably look really good if you add a monkey song to it. <laughs> like, like a TV show, but it's funny because not not the, a lot of the movie isn't shot like that. I, it's Ooh. almost like they they he shot at a different frame rate for that opening, and it really does kind of get the heart pumping, yeah. right? It's like well, I octane. don't like yeah I don't like how this yeah. is going. Like Max right. is Max is in trouble, you yeah. know, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because then we go away from him for a little. And while. we go to Furiosa. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, Imperator Furiosa. Um, yeah, and uh, we we learn that she is going to head to Gastown. Yeah, and she's also going to go to Bullet Town. 
I love that every place is named. Bull, after. No, it's it's a, that's the Bullet Farm. Oh, the Bullet Farm. That's right. Yeah, but it's it's they, Gas Town and Bullet Farm. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they got to trade some stuff to get gasoline and bullets. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and it seems as though, um, you know, it seems as though <laughs> Morton Joe might be a decent customer because he's not talking about going there to like take it. No, he's just going there to trade. He's bartering. Well, well, isn't his brother the one who who runs Bullet Town? I think. Isn't uh, that his brother? Is it? I think Ooh, so. Yeah, I don't know. I think he calls him brother at one point, but well, I it, might, it might be like brother and the Bullet Farmer who rules Bullet Farm. I, I think he, I think he calls him brother. Um, and then the other guy, the People Eater is is the guy who rules uh gas town and he's the one with the really grossly swollen ankles yeah yeah and he he also is um uh he's keeping an account of all the resources spent that they're using to yeah. try to yeah so yeah. yeah the um yeah so what happens is is that furiosa is going to take the tanker and a the war rig as they as they call the it. war rig. Yep. And there's a complement of war boys going with her to go out to Gastown, and then um, I'm never going to look at Gas City, Indiana, the same way. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> I've never like looked it. at Gas City, Indiana. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that. it's the last. I think it's the last town going east on seventy before you go into Ohio. I think it's Gas City. Oh, okay, I probably looked and, at it before, but didn't realize. Yeah, it's it. right. like a one horse town, but it probably has got like I don't know, like some wasteland people in it. Anyway, I mean, but, I'm, I'm sure the people eater lives there. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> if there's anybody in the state of Indiana who's going to eat people. It's probably in Gas City. Um, <laughs> Damn. You are constantly some shade alienating on, people. On, I know. Geographically, Jeff doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like he's never been out of Indiana, and everyone yeah. is fucking awful <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I like people in Chicago. Chicago. Right. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, if... Uh, <laughs> Cast a wide net, this Jeffrey. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but like, uh, she decides to cut the wheel and she's yeah. gonna go immediately going to go head east. Yeah. And like some of the war boys are like, well, what's up? What are you doing with that? She's like, We're, uh, change the plan. We got to yeah. go east. And they're like, okay. She's a little interesting that they work for her. Like, yeah, I thought yeah. she was going to be bad for she's her an the first time I saw it. She's yeah. a lieutenant. So it's like to, yeah. to, to not. Uh, to not follow her orders would be to not follow a Morton Joe's orders. Right. Um, yeah. They so they just eight. think that oh maybe there's a there's a secret plan, right? Yeah. That we weren't privy to, right? And they're just, just followers. Yeah. Anyways. They're just half lifers. And then, but the problem is, is they're not far enough away from the little fella in the chair that's always <laughs> looking out the um, looking out the the telescope. Yeah, a Morton Joe's son, one of them. Yeah. Oh, is that one of his sons? I didn't yeah. realize that. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure him, him and him and um, the big fella, Erectus, Erectus. Uh, so he's got a big son and a sons. little son. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's, huh. that's like a big Enus and little Enus. Well, it's well, like there's, there's a balance to it. It I... is like Master Blaster because um, Rictus Erectus is is very strong but not very smart. The and, other one's uh, very and, smart. And the little fair smart. is very, very it's like, master physically. I've weak, already succinctly but... said this. I know. I was just spelling it out. Thank <laughs> I know. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some people don't I listen like... to all of our episodes. But, but yes, <laughs> to Chuck's point, it's Master Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> Except for they're not connected to one another. <laughs> right. They're physically. They're not... and, and, and Rictus Erectus. God, I, that, I don't know why about that name just drives me crazy. I don't like it, but whatever. Um, He's he's he a little like bit a boner. He, yes, it does. <laughs> he's, a lot, he's a lot more mentally capable than than Blaster. And, oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, um, he's not smart. He's, but not, he's smart. not a. He's not. But he's not a mind. He's of a aware. Child. He's aware of his surroundings. He's aware of of his place in the world. He's aware of motivations. He's he's yeah. He's smart enough. He's yeah. not going to get he's in a fight to the death with you and think it's a game. 
Let's right. Just put and it like that. He, he's probably right. he's probably capable of being so much smarter, but I'm guessing Joe has kept him down to not overthrow him. He's he's a weapon <laughs> yeah. for Joe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And not to be pointed yeah. at himself. Yeah, um, for sure. So he uh, yeah, basically uh, the little fella says like, Hey, um, they're off course to which a Morton Joe's like, what? And so he like looks over and it's like, Oh, what the, what's going on? And so he goes in and he opens up the, 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 um, vault, the, the wife vault, vault. The, the wife vault <laughs> and finds a little old lady in there with a gun. Um, who's like, they're not, they're getting as far away from you as they can get basically. Yeah, and one of the important things that are written on the wall is yep. who killed the world. Who killed the um, world. Jason probably has them all written down, but he stepped away. I can't remember what else is written on the wall, but it's They're, all kind of speculative stuff. We are not things. I we think are not is things. One is, yeah. Um, our, our, uh, our children will not be your your war boys, I think is another yes. one. Yeah, that's another one. Um, but anyway, um, it's... A lot of it is this is the first sign if you were to look at it from the um from the feminism theme that it is pointed directly at male power structures. Right, this is a man's world, right? Exactly. At least the Morton Joe's construct is. Yes, and yes. who killed the world? Well, probably men did. It was probably right. men who made the decisions. Yeah, I think it's a yeah. rhetorical it's but, rhetorical because it's brought up later. Yeah. She says it to another character. Yeah. But, so yeah. then he, uh, so he captures the woman cause she, she's going to shoot him and she fails. He get he's able to knock the gun out of her hand or whatever. And it shoots away from him into the ceiling. And he's like, he's taken my, my precious things. You know, it's like, they've, they've got my, you know, she's got my things. And so he calls the war boys, into battle at this point yep and uh every all the all the war boys are going off and grabbing their their um their uh steering wheels they're doing their prayer thing uh with that all of it is based on like a, a pseudo norse mythology <laughs> valhalla but they but they also worship the machines that they're going to drive into battle it's almost like like uh, decorating the horses that you're going to ride into. Battle, I love right? the steering wheels that are locked up. Like yeah. this is your, your power or your sword basically. Yeah. Um, and then we have Nux who yeah. is who getting the blood transfusion from Max. Yep. Um, and he's a war boy on empty. I think they yeah, call war boy on empty. And I don't know who his partner's name is in this. I don't know if he's really his partner, but they end up in the same car is like, I'm taking this. Car. Oh, they he's are. Like, they are partners because he oh, says that's Josh, that's Joshua Hellman, another Australian actor. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's, the, like, he's the Lancer. Yeah. Slit. Nux is Lancer slit yep. slit. <laughs> he's no slake Mathurst. No, he's no, <laughs> he's no slake Mathurst, but he is slit. I mean, he, uh, he's William Stryker in the X Men universe. Yeah, I oh, knew yeah. I recognized yeah. him. Um, so, but Holt is like he headbutts him in the nose. He's like, "I'm good enough. Strap, strap my donor up, and let's fucking go." Yeah, yeah you can put yeah. him in the front. There's like a little thing in the front of the car. Put him up there. Yep. Plug me in, and uh, this is when he's like basically saying he's going to die on the Fury Road. Nux just, is kind of my favorite character in this movie. He's great. Oh, he's great. Nicholas, yeah. Holt Nicholas Holt is, is great. always great. Love him. Yep. I mean, I, I I love that dude all the way back to when he was a little kid and about a boy. About a boy. He was yeah. even good yeah. in shitty Renfield. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most yes, definitely. Uh, Which there, is weird. Are, two good performances in that movie, and it was not good. And not it was good. Movie. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. It, yeah. Three it's, good. Uh, again, you need to see the favorite. Yeah. Aquafina. Favorite too. Yeah. Yeah, Nicholas Nicholas Holt is good, very good. He reminds me of um, Andrew. Uh, I can't remember his name. Go ahead. You know, you know who, um, you know who Nicholas Holt is going to be next. Andrew Scott is what I was going to say. Oh, I know he's not going to be Scott another. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Go uh, ahead, Jeff. Nicholas Sorry. Holt is the new Lex Luthor. Yes. Oh, I like that. I, like I just that. saw him with his head shaved in a picture, yep. and I was like, oh yeah, that's Lex Luthor. He's yep. also Let's he's go. also. 
He's also going to be in um, Robert Eggers' Nosferatu. Yes, he is. Look yeah, out. he plays, what's his name? Thomas not Hunter. Renfield. No. He plays Thomas. not Renfield this time. Right. <laughs> not Renfield. So, yes. he. Um, yeah, so basically he's I mean, like, I think let he's, me go. I think he's like the main guy. He's the, he's the Jonathan Yeah, he's character. Jonathan. Yeah. 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 Um, so he's like, all right, let's go. And he is, um, and so they, they, they strap up and they're going to head out and Nux is desperate to be like the best war boy. He wants to be admitted into Valhalla. Yep. So they, they shoot out ahead of the rest. That starts like a a minute, an hour and 40 minutes of car chase. Sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) It literally (laughs) is. Yeah. Yeah, um, with like one little little respite, maybe two, maybe two respites. But yeah, yeah. But they, yeah, they head out, and um, you know, like they they're the first ones to kind of approach the uh, the tanker. And at this point, the rest of the guys that are with Furiosa realize, hey, something's not right. So now, right, why aren't we stopping? Right. Yeah. It's like now yeah. you have guys already on the tanker. That are going to try to take back the tanker. Yeah. Like, as what's well going on? as the chasing people. One one thing to note, and I'm sorry to interrupt no, again. No, go right ahead. But we had the scavengers that come in. So first the the people Morton Joe's people fight off the scavengers with the spiked cars that are trying to take the truck as it's going east before they try to take out um Furiosa. That's right. Cause the, cause then they think, yeah, because the guys yeah. on the truck yeah. are like, Hey, we've got, you know, the cavalry's here to, to, the, yes, to yes. help us. And yeah. then they take them out and then they keep coming for them and they're like, boy. Yeah. Because what's going on here? Furiosa <laughs> has made a deal with them to where she's going to give them a, a pod of, of guzzling. A different group. Yeah, a different the, group. Yeah. 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 Right, and and, and the, These are the scavengers or whoever the whoever no, the scavengers are a different group that attacks them first, and then the bikers. Are they? I are, thought they were all the, the same. The bikers were the ones that she made a deal with to get. Oh, I thought they were the all the same. No, no, why would they be attacking her? That's they true. Who, yeah, yeah, they're different. They're different. By the way, Chris Hemsworth plays a warlord that's a biker. Might be oh, connected to that group. I bet. I bet it is. I bet That'd he be is. Awesome. Because so of that course, could be she, why she would be she able would to make have that a deal. contact with yep. them to make the deal. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I like it. I'm just speculating. But, but yes, you're right. So that's that's where yeah they've got to get the scavengers off their off their back. That like they have those really cool like spiky spiny. Yeah, colors. they're awesome. Yeah. And well, you one of them is the car from the they car that like. ate pear, pears. I know, right? The it beetle. looks just like it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um. And yeah, I mean that's I mean that whole that whole scene is amazing because you've got war boys who are <laughs> are not in the know and war boys who are in the know. And then you've got the scavengers and the war boys in the know are like we just got to take care of the scavengers first, so we'll deal with the tanker next. And then when that starts to happen, the war boys on the tanker are like what the hell and they start to revolt. So it's just Furiosa at that point trying to fend them all off. And she's also ring. having to keep the so what's inside the tanker? The wives. The wives. The wives. So yep. they keep popping up saying, we can't breathe back there anymore. And she's like, you got to stay out of sight. It's like, you got to stay down. And so she's having to, you know, she's having to, to shoo them away while also having to shoo war boys away. <laughs> it's madness. I and mean, we it's should mention, madness. we should mention that when, um, the little fella, <laughs> realizes that um the tanker has gone the war rig has gone off path and morton joe immediately goes to his vault yeah we talked we did a, mention did that. we talk about that oh yeah. i'm sorry I, I went to use the restroom i will right I will well we, we wanted that. to know d- did you have everything that they wrote on the walls because we we were able to come up with most of it i think um there was who killed the world our sons will, our not, sons be will not be warlords warlords um we are not things. we are not objects or things something yeah. like that yeah Oh, that's things. what we came up with. Those yeah. were the three. Big Those things. were, yeah, that was basically the three things we had. I think maybe slightly different wording, but we got it. Yeah. Um, the one thing I said was also, it's like that was the first indicator that it's like the, 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 
the finger is being pointed at a male structure, yeah. to which I will come back to later because I yeah, thought yeah. about that more afterwards because it's it does it does inform decisions made and decisions taken by this group that maybe was ill prepared that they were ill prepared for the actual yeah. reality. Yeah. But anyway, I, we'll, we'll come sorry, back around. So, to that. Sorry to derail us with no, my no, 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 no. Go, go right ahead now. So you've got, we've, we've got the, the chase is now fully on. So, so now, I mean, she, she is at the point where, um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to even recall it. Everything, the action is so enveloping in this movie it's hard to kind of recount it beat by beat. I can I can tell this part if you'd like. Yeah, go for I it. Because I kind of remember it, which is weird. Listeners, it's weird that I remember <laughs> it. So they basically fight off all of the Immortan Joe's gang. Yeah. For, for a time. We have the Gas Lords, or what are they called? Gas Town and Bullet Farm. Oh, the Sandstorm. Coming the in sandstorm. from the side, yes. Yeah. yeah. And she drives into a sandstorm. Yeah. That's when the guy's like, why aren't we stopping? And yeah. it pretty much takes everyone out when they go yeah. into the sandstorm. Anyone that goes in there. The only people that really are able to navigate through the sandstorm are Fur- Furiosa and Nux. Yep. And Nux has had um, Max placed behind his car. Yeah, he's like, move, yes. move my blood bag. Yeah. So yeah it's great. The bag. great scene of Max with his hands on the windows, like looking through like, holy fucking shit. What uh-huh. are you doing? Right <laughs> right. Now? Yeah. 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 And Nux gets close to taking them out, and he's pouring fuel or whatever his nitro is yeah. in the tank of his car, and he's basically trying to take himself out, which will de- derail the truck, too. Yeah, because he Max, gets in front. He gets in front. Yeah, and his yeah. plan is to be witnessed. He he sprays himself with the chrome. Yep. Um, and it's like, we're, we're going to Valhalla. <laughs> yeah. Like, and there we're stopping these folks. So this Martin is his Joe first of his suicide attempts. Yeah. And, yes. and Max, he like, sucks fuck at you. suicide. Yeah. He does. Yeah. <laughs> well, this time though, Max uh, does have a thing to do about this. Yeah. It's Max like, reaches yes. in and because he's like, the fuck you is. And he like busts his way through the window. To... And, well, and he hits the brake. Yep. And that makes the car makes the war rig run into the back of the car and, and it's a pretty risky move but he was going to die it's explosion and, or take your chances in a flipped vehicle and, in a flipped right. vehicle yeah yeah exactly yeah it's like he he's doing the calculus pretty quickly and he's like yep better chance of hitting the brakes what was the joke early on that would flip a car like why didn't he just do that like in the first mad max didn't we have a joke about what flips oh cars? If, if it just hit the break the front windshield it would yeah why didn't he yeah. just crawl up there and break the windshield <laughs> well he had to break the back windshield, <laughs> he had to break the back windshield this time <laughs> that doesn't work <laughs> he figured it out that's why it's not the same max yeah. <laughs> oh but yeah gosh. he flips the car the truck gets through yeah Right, and he wakes up the next morning, kind of buried. In, it's such a great shot, yeah, it is of him buried. And when he gets up, and all the sand rolling off of him, I'm like, that's fucking cool and very uncomfortable. Like I would yeah. never want to be in that. It's Don't an every bury crack. Me in sand. It's an every ever. crack. Yeah, yeah. he's got sand in his everywhere. butthole the rest of the movie. I'm sure. Of it. <laughs> oh God, yeah, he's like running around with like gritty, gritty ass the whole rest of this movie. Gritty ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, his ass some is of- like left foot creep. No one will get that. Sorry, I'll just stop. <laughs> the the other thing that he's going to also be walking around with is a lot of sticky head and hair because he washes himself off with mother's milk in a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so gross. Is anyway, mother's milk sticky? I mean, Milk is sticky. I would have to hmm. assume that mother's milk would be possibly stickier. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. I, don't, yeah. I, I mean, milk farmers. What's milk straight out of the tap? What, is it sticky? My guess is yes. I think that there's more we have lactose. A, we have a, we have I think a, there's it more lactose like blood. in, in but, cow milk than in human milk, though. Well, I yes. don't know. I'm, I'm reaching out to the one group what, of people what, I do like. Is what makes the makes it really sticky. The Trekkies? No, the, <laughs> the milk farmers. I don't oh. know. They're, I, today, they're the only people I like. What, what was Everybody the, else what sucks. Is, what is the movie with the blue milk? What is that? Uh, Star Wars? Is it Star Wars? The, oh, yeah, Blue Milk. It's the yeah. latest. Oh, scene. yeah, the Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that um, one was more green. Blue was in the original. Stuff. Was in the original. And the, yeah, Tatooine. Oh, it was in the yeah. original, too? Yeah, okay. yeah Baru was, was, was serving up Blue Milk. Damn. Yeah. 
Sometimes I wonder if she got murdered. Remember simple things like Star Wars. Sorry, guys. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> that's that's fair. I think a lot of people are trying to forget Star Wars. That's why I'm a Trekkie. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> McClunky. All right, let's move on. Moving uh, on. So, so Max, yeah, wakes, so Max up. wakes up. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Max wakes up. He realizes he's, he's still chained, but he looks in the distance and he sees the truck that they were chasing. So he's like, well, I need to get myself off these chains and go steal that truck from these, whoever this woman is <laughs> we've been chasing. Because he has no idea no. Yeah, what what he's tracking, right, with, with Nux. And he, he gives up on, because he, he can't the break the chain. Yeah, and it, it's the shotgun misfires. It's a dud. Yeah, it's a dud. Yeah, the bullet yeah. farmer sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so he carries the door and Nux. Yep. <laughs> up, up to the tra- and it's so great because they use that door later. Like it's not without purpose. Yeah, that, that door gets brought up there. But I like stuff like that in movies where it's like, okay, it's cool. You had to carry the door, but well, never. he's gonna, he's gonna. When the shotgun doesn't work, he's going to chew Nux's arm, his hand off his and arm. And then he sees the, and then he sees the truck. I wonder why he stops. I, I don't think know so. Why. I don't Maybe he exactly sees the other why. cars coming. Yeah. There's a lot of that in this movie where someone's about to do something and they look up and they're like, oh shit. Cause I he does yeah. people he chasing starts to, us. <laughs> he starts to bite into Nux's wrist. Yeah. And then he thinks better of it. And yeah, he, he carries, he carries him with the car door. Yeah. And then, and then they, he ends. He ends up in the most beautiful scene in the world, like five hot women <laughs> in white clothes dousing I, I, themselves in I, water. It's almost like mirage. Like it is yeah. exactly like he even like checks his eyes, like to like, am I seeing what I'm yeah, seeing? Like, yeah, her, yeah. Her, her, her. What? <laughs> it is <laughs> what like, you what would see in the <laughs> desert if you were like losing your mind and wanting so hard for something good in front of you like oh there's five hot women yeah in a wet it's like t-shirt you, contest, contest yeah <laughs> yeah it's like you, you, you're doing pretty good if that's what you see in the last few minutes of your life <laughs> uh-huh. i like that this movie is zoe kravitz who i didn't know at the yeah. time nicholas holt yeah. who i didn't know at the time like I, yeah. I don't think he was very popular yet right no he was already beast at this point yeah he, he was, was yeah. beast yeah, yeah. i thought yeah. it was later okay uh, okay. R- Riley Keo, is that how you say her name? I don't know, but she's she's uh, Lisa Marie Presley's daughter. Uh huh. Yep. Um, and then Abby Lee, who is a legit Australian, she's awesome. Like the dag, well, I love her in this movie. Well, also um, Rosie Huntington Whitley is uh, is a Australian. She was the only other movie she's been in Splendid. was Transform- <laughs> Was in the Transformers <laughs> movie the. Um, uh, Dark of the Moon, I think, was the only other one she was in. Fucking Transformers movies. And she's the she's the the leader. She's, she's the, the leader lead. of she's the, the of she's the, the pregnant. Wives. Yep. Yeah. And she's the one who is she's the only person of this group for a long time of everybody that's going to end up on this on this tanker who actually shows humanity. And the moment that she shows the most humanity is basically her death warrant. And that's when it gives everybody else human humanity as well on that. Right. Oh, Everyone okay. else kind of so, wakes up after that. Yeah. Cause, because yeah. Um, Riley Keo capable, she befriends uh, Nux. Yep. She's like, he's just a boy. You know, she, she really like takes to him and like wants to help him. But at and- this moment, I mean, it's only splendid that wants to to un to I mean she's yes Max is holding a gun to them but she's sure. like I'll cut this the chains off well of you. there's a, there's a dynamic here too which yeah. this movie is built on dynamics right because she's a Morton Joe's favorite yeah yeah so she is the only one that can help the rest of them yeah, in a true. meaningful way because she probably has pull with Morton Joe to get them what they need to get them like so they all take a back seat to her. And like you're saying, her humanity is obviously apparent in that scene, but the other girls don't have that anymore. So their personalities come out, right? Because they don't have that shield. They don't have that protector. They don't have that help. They follow her lead. And when her lead is is no longer there, which we'll get to eventually. Yeah. They They don't don't shrink. They don't shrink, which is really cool. One One tries to leave. One does. But eventually, the other four grow into different 
like they all have different personalities. They're different mothers. Yeah. They're different exactly. nurturers. And they're, and they're all different. Yes. Yeah, they're all different pieces of what you need in a society. Yes. Ultimately, yes. That was yeah. uh, Courtney Eaton, Cheeto the fragile. Cheeto. She's the she is the meekest and most timid. Yes, and that is. We'll talk about this later. I'm not sure her last time leaving was really her trying to leave, but maybe it no, was. it was not. It, it was it was uh, it was her actually growing a backbone. Courtney Eaton is, is in yeah. one of the most hilarious movies I've ever seen. Gods, Gods of Egypt. Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. Oh it's my bad. god, it's bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Worse than the room? Is it badder? No, than the no, room? no. It's not. Like, no, it's not bad it's, in that it's not way. Quite it's like it's that, a big but... budget bad. <laughs> It's, and it's, it's Alex like, Proyas. It was Alex Proyas, the, uh, the guy who made Dark City. It's it's so bad. Well, <sighs> even Dark really City bad. reappraisal, it's not we, as good, right? We need. Uh, I still like I Dark City. That. I thought you didn't like it last time. I haven't seen it lately. I think we need to talk about that maybe one day. But All anyway, right. let's, let's talk about Fury Road. Let's first. talk about my Rictus <laughs> Erectus. <laughs> oh no, not your penis Which, again. Well, we have been talking well, I mean, about the got, lives, so yeah, yeah. So here we go. <laughs> All um, I see on your shirt is whack right now and you want to talk about your rick it's a like wooden jack wheel jack all right okay. anyway but when you in the middle it just says whack whack <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna make sure that that says holy the whole hell time there we go perfect <laughs> oh, there we go i'm okay. oh, sorry if you, sorry oh, viewers up. yeah i wish you wish you were viewers maybe no maybe you not. don't wish um, no we got faces for radio that's <laughs> No, you mean this toothless you grin? People don't like this toothless <laughs> grin. Chuck, I'm telling you, you, you go out there right now and start a new society in the wasteland. You've got it. You've got it, buddy. Chuck Diserectus. I mean, you already have a brother in Australia. Just go. And yeah, I just do. go there. He's yeah. down under. I'll call He's him down up. under. I'll say, I'll find it. Let's do this. <laughs> you already got the accent. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Let's get this all right. back on track. So um yeah, so basically the 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 girls are all cutting their um their chastity belts off and I love that the chastity belts look like teeth. Oh yeah, they've got the um the 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 vagina what is it? What is it? The vagina, the vagina el dente or not el dente but uh, detente. Yeah. It yeah, says that on them? No, but that's like a that's like a a male Sight, like not psychosis, but a male phobia is that the, the vagina has teeth, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> and so, and so it's a, it's, it's, it has that, that built into it. So it's, it's, it's sort of symbolic of that male fear, but it's also a, a defense against anyone who might want to have their way with Immortan Joe's wives, right? Yeah. It's like a chastity okay. belt, but for anyone who might, you know, be a little bit too aroused and not going to be able to control themselves. Yeah. I can see Jeff's rictus erectus. So let's stop. I know. With the Whack. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Whack. Uh, but, but, but I love that, that there's like really interesting symbolism there. And, and obviously it's, it's a piece of equipment that is meant to keep them from their own self pleasure. Right. I mean, they're, they're wearing these, these metal, Well, that's a, that's a whole thing. Yeah. That's a whole thing also where it's like, it, it it is absolute control over these women's sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. The only person who has the key is a Morton Joe. And a Morton Joe is also stealing their one nurturing aspect that brings life, which is milk, right? Yep. Like post birth. Yeah. Um, Yeah. For the, for the, for the, the, the bigger ladies. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're birthing, they're birthing now. The women are taking care of the babies, which causes them to lactate. Right. And these women are going to become that. You're, you're a little bit far away from your microphone, just FYI. Oh, I'm like half an inch. Oh, weird. It just seemed a little lower in volume. Oh, sorry. When you talked about lactation, you were, you, you seemed a little, yeah, yeah, well, he was, wanna... he's, he's like, he's getting dreamy about lactate. <laughs> cool. No, cool. no, we all get there. We all get there. Could you hear me or should I restate? No, you, no, 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 we, no can we, got we can we hear you. We got it. No, and I agree. I, I agree. Yeah, there's probably some 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 aspect of that, right? Where he retires his wives and they and he just keeps them lactating. Yeah, which those is women. So weird yeah. and gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I hear so, you. Yeah, but basically, there's there's a cool fist fight here between <laughs> Nux and Max. 
yeah. that because they're they're still chained to each other. It's fantastic. And they're just throwing each other around and the and the women are kind of getting involved too. It's like fuck these guys. <clears throat> you know, it's like this isn't we're not supposed to have these extra people around. Yeah, because Nux wasn't dead. He's awake now. Yeah. 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 He was just uh, massively knocked out. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, basically, it eventually, they do eventually cut Max loose from Nux. Um, and, but now there's more of a Morton Joe's War Boys are coming. Well. She, Furiosa, rushes Max at the moment where um, Splendid was about to cut the chain because she sees an opening. She sees a blind spot, and she takes it, and she rushes and bum rushes him and takes him down. And there's a whole fight with between Max and Furiosa, which is that's right. awesome. Yeah. And um, but in, and there's a gun that's hidden on the rig that she tries to get, and then Max gets it, and eventually he gets the upper hand with the gun. And it's oh, it's so cool! Like he shoots like three times around her head, and then puts points it right to the back of her head. And it's like I mean business, lady. And that's when he gets loose. Yeah, also, but he also nicked um, the girl. Um, what's her name? Yeah, shot her in the splendid. Leg. His yeah. fa- the favorite. So that that is where that's what Furiosa uses against Max. Is like you've you've damaged his favorite. You've damaged his goods. You, do you really think you can? You can chance his mercy. But she's misread Max because I don't think that's his intention at this point. Well, anyway. he's just like, well, I'm not going to, we're not going to move then because he tries to drive off. Right. Right. And, and she doesn't, doesn't the, know that there's, there's a kill, the kill switch. switch. Yeah. So the car, so the war rig dies and they all run and catch up. Meanwhile, Nux is still like just like back there. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he gets knocked out again, I think, or something. And, uh, but they catch up. And and she's like, you know, I only only I can drive this thing. We can wait here, and you can take your chances, or you can move over, and we can keep going. Right? right. She gives him that choice, and he eventually decides to to go ahead and like let's get let's beat cheeks, as Jeff would say. And there's That's a really cool Jeff scene. <laughs> there's a really cool scene which relates Max and Furiosa because we didn't even talk about this in the last movie. But when he first shows up at Thunderdome and he says, my skill can be my bartering, right? Like I can yeah. kill a fool. He unloads like 51 weapons on his person. Oh, yeah. That's a classic scene, right? Where he's yes. like got all the weapons and it just gets comical. He's pulling them from, from everywhere. Yeah. It's comical in the truck, too, when he's yep. pulling all the weapons. So Furios yep. and Max, while Jeff mentioned earlier, are opposites are also kindred spirits yeah, totally. in a way. Yeah, yeah. They're they're the same. It's two sides of the same coin, right? They know they know what it takes to survive. Yeah, yeah. And they just ha- they just view what's left of the world in opposite ways, right? Where right. where Max sees it as hopeless, she is full of some hope of finding where she came from. It's that- all what drives you because yeah. I I think I can make the argument that she doesn't really believe it. But she wants she it has more than anything to. because she, that's what's going to keep her alive. Yeah. Just like Max is yeah. like survival. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Agreed. Um, <sighs> She's so, such an interesting character. Like, man, there's I'm really I really hope they do that character right in the next movie, because there's a lot you can read in this one about the decisions she makes and maybe it's just nice to be able to just make those reads on your own and i haven't fed to you but what's what's interesting her her character you get you get just enough about her to understand her motivations and ultimately the it's about redemption right she's done bad things she has done the bidding of a warlord and she sees and has been convinced by these wives probably mostly by splendid like we we need a better life right. for us and our children i i think there's and room she for has, she's holding hope. on to this hope of the green place yeah right but I, I think, think there's room for disappointment in the next one because she is not going to be this person no she's not we're gonna find out why and she's gonna make choices we do not like i think we're probably. gonna get i think we're gonna get the seed 
of redemption at the end of Furiosa. Probably. Yeah, Sorry, Jeff. Probably. We were, no, we were both was, trying to... Well, I was just going to say that I kind of feel like... I'm not entirely sure that she was convinced by the girls to leave. I think... I, well, I think she I think needed, it, I think it's, she needed Ooh, a reason to do it. I see what you're saying, though, because the green place is only in her mind. Yes. It's not in their mind. She was feeding those stories to them. Yeah. But I also think that their the midwife is probably... Because the midwife, if you know, the midwife is the same age as the as the women, as the many mothers, right? So yeah. I think that maybe she was the one who was like, "What's going on here is wrong. You don't deserve this." You need I agree. And, and, I think and maybe, she's and, the impetus, and then Furiosa and is ha- like, "Yeah, you're right. Even, we have a she way may to even do have this. a. She may no. even have a long term relationship with Furiosa. That's possible, possible too. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. I think that she did that to the wives. The wives went to Furiosa. It's like yeah. a chain. It's something like that. Yeah, and yep. yeah. and Furiosa has always shown some contempt toward toward the Morton Joe, right? Like I mean, this she's was bringing it, in, she's bringing it in just like everybody else. Yeah, this was a yep. good enough reason her for dead. her to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So so yeah so she. Um, yeah, because that's why I think it's like she has the hope of a place that 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 becomes known or that is known by the midwife to which then they say, hey, let's go to that place. She's like, yeah, that'd be great. I can go back to the place I came from. And then that's the beginning of that. And maybe that's what we see by the end of, of this movie that's coming out. Next Did you week. notice, Jeff? Sorry, this is a this is a digression, but it's a quick one that when a Morton Joe was getting his like his like powder, you know, his, mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. demoisturizing, you know, treatment and all that. And his getting his, his plastic body cast put on him that he had a bunch of metals. Yeah. And one of the metals was a 500 metal. I did it not notice a, that. There's a, there's a 500 metal on there. Yeah. That's awesome. Maybe you won cool? one of the last 500s. Wasn't that, wasn't that a great, that's a great little detail. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't notice that. Yeah. I didn't notice that. Check I just, for it next time. I did, um, I did chuckle at all the medals that only he could have given himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, very, yeah, it's like nobody it's else is It's very self-congratulatory, yeah. right? Like he's found these relics and he's he's used them to adorn himself. But one of them is a fi- – it says 500 on it. Yeah. That's amazing. Isn't that great? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So one of – so they, they continue on – I, this may be skipping ahead a little bit, but I love, love, love the shot when everybody looks out and they see like the weird people with like the sticks. It is skipping ahead. It is skipping ahead, but that's all right. Um, what happens first is Nux catches up. He comes to and he's able to run and, and get onto the back of the war rig before before they're able to really get up to speed. And um, and they keep trucking along, and I do believe that. Wait, no, is, does Nux get on the back of the war, or does he get back with the the other war boys and Morton Joe? Because uh, he ends up back with them first, because where where the the they have to go through the the uh, canyon. No, he does. He does get. He does. He does get back on, and he actually tries to kill Furiosa. That okay. And and, and they and they push him off because later, you remember, one of them is like, "Oh, I thought we, I thought we threw you off." Oh, and he yeah, was still that's there. Right. Yeah, cause, yeah, because they're like, "Oh, I thought we threw you off." Yeah. yeah, it's like it's very sweet the way they say that. Almost, it's uh, yeah, because it's like, "Oh, you're still here." Oh, okay. <laughs> But yes, you are correct. He does get thrown off, and then, um, or no, that was actually later. I'm I'm a little a bit confused. Hold on a sec. Um, well, it, it regardless, well, well, yeah, but, but regardless, that does have to happen because he does get rejoined back with the Morton Joe and the War Boys. Because at that point, he's able to when, say to Morton Joe, "I know how to get to them. I know where things are on that truck." Right, and they've and they've blown the canyon, and it can only get so many people through at once, and they and it takes them some time before they can clear the pass. Yeah, and and he 
he's like basically gets the eye of a Morton Joe and a Morton Joe gives him his gun and he's like, get on board and try to kill Furiosa. Right. And that's when he like epically fails. Right. Is, <laughs> right. Yeah. Because, and then he's hiding in the back of the truck. For yeah. Well, he's, the he's there when he's there because once everybody catches back up with the war rig, that's when, um, splendid goes out to try to like yeah help out and that's when she falls off gets run over by joe nux is with joe at that point because he has a a realization that his failure has doomed immortan joe's prized possession and himself well, well, not no, only he's that, on, but, he's, but he, he says he says he he saw it he saw my blood bag driving the war rig right it's yeah. like he's failed on so many levels he was in the truck at that point because he takes the, he gets thrown onto the truck he falls down and he's stuck there then she no. dies and they find him hiding in the back no of the he's truck he's there he is there outside the truck looking at the morton joe's grieving and how do they why does he decide to go back to get them later he has to he has to go he has to at this point he decided he cannot stay with a morton joe because he's going he is there's failed. no way he can just get in the truck though because he's in the back of the truck when the red-headed girl goes back yeah i know he's but not there he's no, not he is, there he is there with a morton joe because he is watching a morton joe uh, uh mourning with uh with splendid while uh erectus uh homo erectus is is blowing away the <laughs> it's shooting at the truck as it's driving away and the girls are, are like one of the girls at that point are like we need to we need to go back and uh, and max is like no she went under the wheels she's dead and furious is like did you see that and he's like she went under the wheels it's nothing to go back for and they stop at some point shortly after that because that's when cheeto he's not there I just read it. He's not there when a Morton Joe is mourning. He's in the, he's on the truck because he gets shot on top of the truck and his stain get tri chain trips him up and he's right. with them the rest of the movie until later. I swear he's what he is watching Joe. He mourn. not. He's not. Neither here nor there. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. The point because is, because he that does, he does realize, he does realize that my blood bag is driving the truck. Joe knows that I have failed completely. I'm never going to get into Valhalla, to which basically Rig like consoles him and says, "Hey, it's all right." You, yeah, you yeah, have a that's, future, that, that's that's absolutely right because it's after. It's after they blow the pass and Morton Joe helps him get on. He takes the rig. him with him. He takes him with him because he and he's he on had, the, he's on the rig when um, splendid. He has a get, piece of the dress. Yes, yes, yes. He has a piece of the dress. That's how he gets with the Morton Joe, and they send him back to kill her, and he right. fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, regardless regardless this is regardless. when we get to the point where it's like cheeto wants to leave yeah and the other girl is like yeah, yeah there's nothing to go back to you know it's like it's not going to be any better going back um and it's uh it's the others that because this is when the gas town people come to get him and furiosa has that cool like max misses a few shots oh, and then so she puts cool. the gun on his shoulder and shoots through the light yeah uh, and this and is and this is in that scene where you're talking about with the stilt people in the in yeah. the the what we've come to find out is the green place that's that's because yes, there's still water there. favorite shot in the movie too like that creepy like the things it, I mean, it looks AKA, like aka aka trees <laughs> yes yeah. in, that, the, in the marshy land with people on stilts oh it's so cool it looks like something like that that would have been in a um in like one of those really weird like late 70s animated a terry movies. gilliam a terry gilliam i'm thinking more like wizards or um you know like uh 
that that kind like, of like a like a Ralph Bashke image. Yeah, kind of more, but like less racist. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, but like wizards. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's. Um, and I shouldn't say the Bashke. was Ralph, was Bashke, Ralph Bashke a racist. No, but he he would he would play up stereotypes in movies well, like Coonskin and stuff that's like true. that to, that's true. to make the point that he's trying to make. But Wizards is the movie I'm thinking of of his where it's like very sci-fi, very weird um, things that don't quite make sense when you're looking at it. Like your brain can't quite figure out what you're looking at. Okay. Okay. But it's there. Yeah. You know, but it's like it's piecing together what it can. And that's the first thing I think of is like those types of sci-fi images that are like again super alien to what you're able to really kind of conceive and and even you know like furiosa and max are even looking at that like i don't know what that is i don't know what we're seeing (laughs) you know yeah it's like whatever it is it ain't good because these are probably like super mutants you know (laughs) well they've adapted there there are people who who have adapted they've figured out you know how do we survive in this in this land there's probably some kind of benefit to living where they live that they that they've adapted to yeah um but yeah we find out later that's the green place you know that was the place where the last vegetation existed in this area and then it went and then became poisoned and then it became poisoned yeah um but they don't know that at this time but they do know that the war rig is stuck because it that this is very marshy land it is stuck uh, they need to get out of this because they've got people hot on their tail, namely uh, the – who is it? The the people eater, I think, is who they've got hot on their tail. Is it the people eater? Yes. Or maybe it's the, the bullet farmer. One of those two either, guys. Either one. Yeah. I mean, they, the people are right there. The, the one that doesn't have the, the swollen ankles – is after them because he's kind of gotten through he's sort of leading the pack and he's the closest it is the bullet the bullet farmer farmer, yeah and um so they've got to get the rig out of the mud they don't really have enough time so max is like i'll go is this when he takes care of it or is this when they they do the shot because at one point he leaves Bullet goes, farmer is when they do the shot. shot. Is yeah. when they do the shot. Well, when is it that he leaves and he and he blows the, up the the gas oh, town guy? Yeah, it's the, uh, yeah. That's a they little come, bit. That's a little bit later. Yeah, because yeah. that's when they come back. Yeah. It's like, oh, are you okay? You got blood. And it's like that's not his blood. Yeah, and that's, that's when a, he washes himself off with the mother's milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they end up in the green place next. Basically, I, well, well, we're, in the, we're in the we're in the supposed green place now, right? Yeah. Where he takes the shot. I love this because he takes like two or three shots. There's only one bullet left. And they're trying to get the, the rig out of the mud. And if they don't get the shot, they're probably in a lot of trouble. And this is a really neat moment with um, Furiosa. She like runs up to Max and she's behind him. And she isn't going to demand the gun. Right? But you can tell she wants it. And Max feels it. And Max knows she can make the shot. And he gives the gun to her, and he mm-hmm. and she puts it down on his on his shoulder. And what did she say? Like, uh, don't don't breathe. Yeah, yeah. And she takes a shot. Of course, it's a perfect shot, like right down the 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 spectacle, right into his eyes, and it blinds the the bullet um, farmer. What is his name? The bullet the, farmer. Yeah. yeah. And that give that buys them just enough time because then they're. Uh, you know, Nux is trying to drive the rig out. They've got it tied to a thing, aka a tree, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> tied to the thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the tree. Uh, and I love that that Max is trying to hold the tree in, and Furios is trying to push the war rig. It's like both of these are futile actions, people. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> but they're I like, but they're Nux doing what takes, they have to do, right? <laughs> I like that Nux takes the four inches of chain he has on his arm and brings it to Max so he can complete the, the winch. Oh tie yeah, yeah, on the thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're all doing their their part. They're yeah, everybody's all helping. Trying. Yeah, yeah. They're, everybody's trying to do something to get to get away. And they get it out. They get it out. They get up to the higher ground by the thing, 
and pass the thing and uh and they've <laughs> they've got enough distance now between them and the pack to feel a little bit comfortable and at this at this point they encounter some bait yeah the woman in the uh what is the oil tower or whatever tower she's in naked and furiosa is like i've seen this before yeah and she gets out of the car and she starts announcing who she is, who her mother is, and blah, 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 well, blah. Well, even before, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's when, yeah, Tom Hardy says that's bait. The, the naked oh, lady, yeah, that's bait. The naked lady in the tower, yeah. Yeah, that's bait. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right. That is when that happens. That is when that happens. And she gets out and does that thing. And then the woman climbs, does her little call, um, which harkens back to the last movie with the kids calling. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of with whatever their call was. And, uh, all these motorcycle, these dangerous motorcycle men come down. <laughs> like, oh no, it's motorcycle men. And it turns out to be the mothers. <laughs> yeah. The I many love mothers. I, uh, this is, I mean, skipping ahead a little bit on them, but I do love how giddy they are to get back into the fight. Yeah. Like, yeah. they are, like, one dies with a smile on her face yeah. because she was able to get back into, you know, like, fighting for what was right or what, you know. Who is well, it here's... that says it feels like hope? Is that, was that Nux who says that? I can't remember, but I was just about to say, like, this is where Max is, like, character, his character is wrong. Because hope is what leads to this fight. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter if you ever make it to the green place, but your survival, like survival, is hope. Right. Too. But yeah, sorry, I can't remember who said feels like hope, but I think it is Nux. But that's later. That's a little bit later too. When because essentially what happens is they're the oh god, it's like a devastating moment for Furiosa. Like that, it's all it's in all of the like promo material yeah. for this movie is when, when, when she, she like stumbles out into the desert on her own and falls to her knees and screams in anguish because she finds out that the green place is no more. Right. right? And her hope passed through it. Her hope has died. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then they decide like, if you came from the West, then you drove through, you drove through it. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was the creepy place with the crows. Yeah. Yep. I also love this, the line Abby Lee says when one of the mothers asks her if she's pregnant. She's like, yeah, it's probably a like baby warlord. It's going to be so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, she, and then the, the mother says, well, it could be a girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love it. Um, but yeah, that's where they make the decision. Okay, well, we've got these bikes. We're going to go. We've got enough water and food maybe to last 160 days uh, this way, right? If Max, one of them is yours. Come with and us. One of these like, are yours. You're welcome to come with us. And he's like, "That's that way is death. Yeah, I think he says that because uh, doesn't he say it's like basically you're going to run out before you get to the next place. Yeah. Well, it's not yet. Not yet. First, he says, I'm going to go my own way. Yeah. Oh, okay. You yeah. can do whatever you want. And then he's standing much like he is in the beginning of the movie, looking over that ledge. Cars coming this time instead of coming at, like from the backside. And then he has a plan. Like if all of these people are out here, then we your just plan is get, go back the way you came. You yeah. just need to get through them. We have seeds. We have water. We have everything you need. And yeah. he goes and articulates it in max's way not how i just said it right but well, yeah because yeah, like, we he need just, to go back they, they look at the map and he just he just says here's your way back and he here's points, our way back he just points at a morton joe's land and, and it's he, like and we're he, not going back and it's like mm, everybody's out here it's undefended it's like yeah. i promise you the way you're going is 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 not You'll go 160 days and not find a thing not find a thing but this this will be one hard day Right, yeah. it'll be yeah. a hard day, but there's there we know that this place has the resources that we need to survive. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that's when the uh, the many mothers are like, "Hell yeah, let's go, let's fuck." Oh, fight. I know they're all into it. It's like, yeah, yeah I like this plan. Yeah, I like <laughs> yeah. she's like, I like this plan. Yeah, and that's uh, I think what Nux says. It feels like hope, right? Yeah. It's like, oh wow, that's neat. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. This 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 war boy with a half life is is um has something to believe in. That's right. not, he's he's human now. He's fully yeah. a human. Yeah. Yeah. Something real to believe in. Yeah. yeah. So now comes this is it. This is the this, this is the is, chase home. Yeah. yeah. It's it, we we went we chased out and now we're chasing home. And uh basically uh they are beelining right back the way they came. Yep. You got you got people on bikes, you've got the the war rig, and you've got got some guns, you've got some, you know, you've got some weapons, you got the one lady who's got like a bag full of bullets. Yep. And um basically they're gonna try to go as far as fast as they can the other way to make it hard for when what eventually happens, which is Joe realizes they're going back. They want to get through the pass first and blow it up. Yep. And it's like, they're headed for the Canyon. They're going back to where it's undefended basically. And so like now the chase is on to get to the Canyon. And, um, this is when, uh, I mean, it's everyone it's, dies. It's basically. a Mad Max chase at this point. It's like people yeah. you don't expect to die die, much like in War Road Warrior. It's like, did you think that the youngest of the many mothers was going to die the way she did very quickly? No, nope. just like the warrior woman in Road Warrior. It's like, wow, well, I didn't expect for her to be expendable in this in this plot. Um, yeah, it's like they they leave with like. I don't know. It's like Nux and Max and Furiosa and the four remaining wives and like seven or eight of the many mothers. Yeah. Something like that. Well, I can tell yeah. you only seven people come back and live. It's this. like, I think one mini mother, two, two mini mothers, two, 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 two many right. mothers live. All yeah. of the remaining wives. Yep. Max and Furiosa. That's Max it. and Furiosa. Because yeah, the only wife that dies is splendid. Is splendid. Right? Yeah. yeah. But the big, the big moment in this movie, and I love it so much, is I don't know if we have to talk about, it, but I mean, it's just the if car you love chase it so much, again. We right? Talk about it. It's very well, it's cool. This moment. I mean, no, I don't the, know the, if we should the, talk the, about the, anything to, else. Coming the totality up to of the of the chase back is just whoever yeah. can get to the to the canyon first. Yeah. And it's, it is a, and Max is right. It's a hard day because right. half of, of everybody dies. <laughs> yep. God, it's but awesome. Nux got this. has his moment, right? He's yep. like, we have a Morton Joe and everybody chasing them back through. Um, I can't even remember. Um, the, the, the son gets onto the rig at one point and is fighting Max. Um, Rictus Erectus. Yep. <laughs> Somebody else go with this because all I remember is the dude. It is it is mayhem. You've got Do Warrior playing guitar. You've got <laughs> you've got the um, polecats, you know, hopping onto the the rig. Yep. Yeah, you've got. It's just it's just insane. I mean, yeah, they're, they're stealing women and bringing them. To there's different there's cars. The, uh, yeah, they're they're yeah. There's a, the really cool scene where the lead car for Morton Joe's War Boys is like blowing fuel and, he, and it's nux's it's, um his lancer but he's and it's on, max's car and it's max's car and he's on the hood of it and they're blowing the the guzzoline into it to give it a boost and and nux has to get onto the roof of the uh the hood of the war rig do the same and furious is like don't blow my engine don't blow my engine but he has to keep the war rig ahead otherwise if that car gets in front of them they'll spike the wheels yeah. And they do get in front, and they do try to spike the wheels, but they're able to like dodge it. But Max um, takes over for Nugs, Nux yeah. too, yeah. which is yeah, right, because Nux Nux um ends up inhaling some of the guzzoline and starts to kind of like choke, and so Max has to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is intense. Like the whole sequence is intense as fuck. <laughs> but ultimately. Yeah, it's um, Furiosa is able to kill Morton Joe. She, she like, um, she. What does she do? She like spears him in his mask, and then gets the chain wrapped up in the tires of his own car, and it pulls his whole jaw off his face. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's super cool. Um, 
And then when he's dead, they still have to contend with um, Rictus. But he dies. He dies in the crash with that Nux. Nux creates. He he jackknifes the truck. He jackknifes the truck. He like spins the wheel. He jackknifes it. The whole thing crashes into the pass, and it blocks the whole pass. And yeah, the everything. And I think it's even the Doof Warriors vehicle is right behind him. It crashes into it. It creates the, the spectacular explosion in the. And the guitar and the steer- steering wheel fly at the ID audience. Did yeah, you guys see yeah. this in 3D? Yes. I don't think I did. It was, it's, it's so good in 3D. It's I, so good in 3D. The other thing That also, guitar and that steering wheel like both just come right at your face. It was yeah. Nux was not mediocre in this scene. Sorry. Yeah, he, he was not at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, One of the other things that also happens too with the whole like – um, when they're when they're trying to like get to a Morton Joe, this is when Cheeto is like, "Let me over into the car. I want to come home." Which was to oh, I like that to give the uh, which basically allows for um, it. Well, she was trying to get over there to kind of create disruption. Yes, yeah. and and that yeah. ultimately allows for um, uh, for. Um, Furiosa to to get over there yeah. as well as um, because also um, uh, uh, why can't I think of uh, which one? Who you got? Rictus and Rictus. No, Toast. Uh, Toast the knowing <laughs> also gets over there. So like there, like it, it's starting to pile up to where it's like there's a lot more. On the Morton Joe's car, the neat. Because- oh yeah, yeah. Well, she gets she gets snatched by one of the um, polecats. Toast. But that's yeah. the vehicle yeah. they're eventually going to end up taking everyone across. Right, because with. yeah, yeah. Because Nux stays exactly behind. Exactly right. They all he get has- into that car and they and they abandon the war rig. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, because also capable looks back to see the 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 uh, the mother who had all the bullets in her bag. Yeah. Like dead, but smiling. Yeah, like and, she and was, the seeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so to get through, Furiosa got stabbed through the legs, so she's very injured. Yeah. And oh yeah, Max, she's super. She's super fucked. Yeah, she's gonna die. Yeah. But Max does what kind of what he's been taught at the beginning of this movie, and he he learned donates, a new skill. He donates his blood to her, uh-huh. yep, which saves her life. Yep. And he also has to like stab her in the rib to. Oh yeah, she, she's to her, reinflate her. Her uh, lungs are collapsing lung because she has a collapsed lung and she so yeah. she can't breathe. Yeah, that's yeah, a scary see, thing. My when he first, says my that, that's, that's a, that's a really good Tom Hardy line. When he says, "I'm so sorry," you really feel it in his voice, and he pushes the knife into her. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good. And the whole time, the one mother is just narrating it all. <laughs> she's like totally almost detached from it, but she's like, she can't breathe. She's killing herself with every breath. And then she's like, she's exsanguinated. She's lost too much blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Max is like, oh, well, I need to stab her with this knife then in her long. And now I need to give her blood. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause Max kind of, I mean, he has good ideas, but that woman is kind of like, the master she knows what's point. wrong and he yeah. knows the solution. Yeah. 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 It's like so, Master Blaster. That's right. Yeah, that's what yeah. I said. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, they return to a Morton Joe's um, Citadel and they're, they're doing this right because they've got fucking a Morton Joe on the hood. It's like, you want to see what we just did? Yeah. You're all free. You know, fuck off. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like they're celebrated by the people. They're so, you know, it's like even the even the war boys are like there's almost it's going to sound when you're really, oppressed. Normally you, you react this way. Well, Sorry. yeah, no. But what I'm going to say is it's like it almost sounds cheesy, but like hope has infected everybody all at once. They're no yeah. longer repressed by Joe, like like Chuck was saying, but like it's. Like the war boys and everybody who's been left, it's like there's a new tomorrow here, and it's Furio- yeah. Furiosa is gonna 
probably do better. <laughs> and, and you get I mean, the you sense that, have to. You get, sense, you get the sense in that moment that she's respected and maybe even loved, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, she might have already been beforehand. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like there, there, that that she would not command that type of response if if she weren't. Yeah. Right. And then, so here's where I here's where I say that Max is a little bit more like a specter. Okay. Even though everybody's been interacting with him this whole time, he is being lifted up on the uh, on the platform with her. And then there's a quick look away, and when you look back, he's in the crowd. Is he, he on the? Is he on the yes. platform? I don't. He's ever on the platform. See him on the platform. When, it platform. Even... when they're lifting her up, he is there next to her, and then it split. It cuts away, and then cuts back, and he's down on the ground, and he starts <laughs> disappearing into the crowd. He, he <laughs> there's you know, no they, real way to know how much time passed before they sent all the water into the people. Like, there's no way to know. I don't know. I don't. Well, know. all I know is is that that platform's up. High enough to where you would realize that somebody has jumped off of it. We're we're gonna no, talk we don't to George Miller about this. We're gonna talk to George Miller about this. That feels it. flimsy to me. I mean, no, the everybody is still on the platform as it's going up, and then, and then, then they he, cut to them. They no, listen, everyone's on the platform as it's going up. Sure, I don't even know that that is one hundred percent true, but you're probably right. But then they cut to them all at the things to let the water out we have no idea how much time it's war boys there. let that out no the, the the big big ladies did furioso yeah, the and the ladies out. were up there they're not still on the platform when that happens well well, well no furiosa is furiosa is still on the platform yeah no yeah. i think the platform no. all the way up no, 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 the, no, no, the no, car no. is it's right behind up. her and it's still going up and then she looks down yeah, when as she it's looks, going up when, when she looks at max and max is on the ground furious is on the platform being rose mm. rised up into the because the rose because the, the milkers the are the are letting out the the water he's yes. not a specter somebody was there to help them help who the people all through the movie well, no, I'm oh, just I saying know. it's like, yeah, like I said, I said, I just feel like people it's funny are, editing, but <laughs> uh, I said that people were interacting with him the whole time. But then there are certain things that one, he shouldn't survive. And two, it's kind of spatially awkward there with that edit. Well, I do. I do. That I, he is some, now down on the on the ground and he and he does disappear. And into he does the crowd. disappear. He does disappear in the crowd. Like there is something to that. Like it's a he's almost like a angelic figure. That appears when he's most needed, right? Ugh. I know he's failed of, it, so many times that that doesn't make sense. Well, well, it, well, it does make sense if you think of him as as he's always trying to redeem his failure, right? So when he's called upon and he and he is he's successful in his endeavor, it doesn't matter. The next time he he's still like reliving that that trauma, that failure. He's always trying to redeem himself. He's, it's almost regardless like of how many successes. Yeah. Right. No matter how many times he succeeds, he's 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 doomed to always repeat to try to save the next person, you know, or yeah. whatever. Oh, and and I think there's something to that, regardless of the Spectre theory. I think there's something to that right. with this Max character. Yeah. Again, it kind of calls back to that fairy tale kind of concept where it's yeah. like, you know, it's like, why would he never try to set down roots when he knows a good thing, right? He, he tried. He damn well tried in uh, in uh, Thunderdome. He right. wanted to. He wanted to lay down roots in the uh, little oasis, right? But when circumstances when, wouldn't allow him, yeah. right? But like you know, like he wanted to, but at the same time, it's like the other forces outside of him. Led to other things that he had that he felt, and he could have stayed. He could have. He could have stayed. He could have been he could the have tribe. Said, well, I told her. I told her it was fucked if you if she went there. Yep. You know. He could have been the tribe of state, but that's not that's not ultimately who Max is. Yeah. Right. Yep. But no, I mean, like the, the Spectre thing was the only way I could really kind of describe that kind of concept. But it's like it. it but yeah, I mean, it is a. He's. Uh, Again, we don't even know if this is the same Max. He, we I mean, don't know if the same Max. We don't know if Max is is really even real. Real. Maybe after the events of the first movie, he's, he's not just real. become these a are, legend. These are movies, guys. Oh God, damn it! <laughs> uh, I, thought we were watching, I thought we were watching by a biological. Uh, I thought this was an episode of biography. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Peter you Graves guys, was there to I'll tell, tell me. Guys, guys, we're so we're such we're such gullible fucks. You're so silly. We're so we're gullible fucks. We're gullible fucks. <laughs> With the guzzoline. That yeah. that's totally sounds like something an Australian would say. It right? does. A gullifuck. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. It's it's if, it, gull, if it's, it's not, we should start it. It's I'm like Foster's like posting it's Australian, in Australian Reddits. Gullifuck. Yeah. 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 I I love Australia. This, I just want to say we don't give we, we usually we, we we talk about geographical area, aka when Jeff talks about a geographical area, we pretty much like dump on it. I just want to say oh, it. Australia. I, I don't know that I ever want to really visit you because I'm afraid of all the things that will kill me, but I think you're pretty rad. I will say one thing because I, I was kind of chatting with a uh, with an Australian coworker of mine. Uh oh. We were we were poorly raised on what Australia really is in the eighties. Like to me, it's all Mad Max, Crocodile Dundee, and Yahoo Serious. And that is not <laughs> a great representation. <laughs> Of what Australia oh, I is. I don't know. My brother says it is. Uh, <laughs> that's, he says that's all those things. And yeah, more. he says it's mostly Yahoo serious. It's mostly Yahoo serious. Mostly <laughs> Yahoo serious. Okay, yeah. see, now that's the thing. If I was told it was all mostly hope. Yahoo serious, then I would be right. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, that's what we were fed in the 80s when, like, all of a sudden, like, you know, like, we knew, we knew Mel Gibson was vaguely Australian. I, he, like... He's not though. He's not right. That's why I say he's vaguely Australian. Vaguely, we, well, I mean, but like then, he escaped Mad Max, right? Like that's how he got over to Hollywood, right? Yeah, sure. he walked across water because he's a Specter Jesus. He's Specter we, Jesus. He's Inspector <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> not Inspector. <laughs> I know, but that would be fun. Jesus. That's, <laughs> I want to watch that movie. <laughs> Jesus going around with a magnifying glass, and everybody's like, "What the fuck is that, Jesus?" And it's like, "I know, right?" There are there are a lot of famous. Australians. He's always building models with his little carpentry shit to <laughs> figure out what happened. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, we got a couple things we have to determine here. I'm gonna we got I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put a cap on this thing. We've got to determine our bracket. I also want to know who do you think is the most most famous Australian director. Well, if Peter Jackson was from Australia, I'd well, say he's him, not. but he's, he's from not. New Zealand, so he's But I'm going to go with another Peter Rear. But Peter Weir is pretty damn famous, but is he is he now? And if you, I don't know, I mean, he's uh, he's 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 been nominated for like eight Oscars across the different true. things he does. Well, well, so has the another Australian director uh, named you're George, George Miller. You're, you're getting a George <laughs> Miller. I know. I know. Well, um, okay. So fame is a weird thing because I don't think if you ask the normal. They the don't know who directs anything. Person well, they don't. Wouldn't yeah, know who don't, directed either. They don't know who the them. fuck Peter Weir is. Not like well, the, let me finish. Okay, sorry. They wouldn't know who saw, either saw, of them are. Right, right. So, like Spielberg is famous. If you asked a Spielberg movie, or if you asked somebody who directed Star Wars, they'd know. Is Baz Luhrmann is by default? No, is I've Baz got, Luhrmann more more famous? No, it's Mel Gibson. <laughs> it's oh my Mel god! Gibson. I guess yeah, I guess he's the director too. Yeah, but but. He's an Academy Award winning director. I, I, agree, I agree. I agree. Does fame That's really matter? The what, That's kind of sad. What we think of it over here, because you really need to talk to an Australian person to find That's out true. who the most yeah, famous fair. director is. That's in my true. opinion. I bet it's I bet it's something rad like uh, Brian Trenchard Smith or something like Probably. that. Probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, maybe, but like I, I tell you right now, for me personally, I want to see. Pretty much anything that George Miller has done. We've got another one coming. we got another one coming later this year. Well, have you seen... Um, as far as one we're going to talk about. But, like, I would also like to watch all of Peter Weir's movies. Yeah. Um, there's some really great. good ones. They're both great. They're both but great? they're not names I think most people would just readily be able to recall. No. Agree. But Agree. Mel Gibson, they would. <laughs> yes. But they might not know that he directed a lot of movies either. Yeah. Um, they would know have him you, as an actor. Have you seen 3,000 Years of Longing? Either one of you? No. Check it. Check mm. it out. It's great. Idris Elbus is a, Elbus is a genie. Is it George? Is in oh, it. yeah. It's George Miller. It's directed by George Miller. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure a couple of the milk ladies are in it. It's actually great because it didn't look that good to me. It is. It's pretty fucking good. I was like, very skeptical of that it one. Is, Were it you is, it when is, you went into it? I liked it a lot. Um, skeptical, skeptical of it. 
a little, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit, but it's um, it's very different. Like George Miller is just his range is insane. Um, it's a, it's an Arabian Nights tale, right? Right. It's right. you know, take it however you want to take it. It's sweet. It's sentimental. Um, Ew. But it, yeah, but it's also like r-rated sentimental right Ooh, jeff's gonna like that <laughs> he likes r-rated there, george there is, miller movies. there are some like really interesting things basically the the premise is it's, it's a genie who has been trapped for three thousand years in a lamp and it's all of his near what? misses i've never heard of this kind of concept but it's all of his near misses to being released Right. And all of the, the moments where he has been released, but then recaptured. So huh. it's like him telling the tale, his tale of his life to Tilda Swinton, who has released him, who he's granted three wishes, who refuses to make three wishes, and which is the only way that he can be truly free. So it's um, him convincing her to make the third wish or right. whatever. Right. And it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. Yeah. Check it out. I have a, I have a wish. That we should end this episode? No, it's not, no. That we I should mean, just decide our bracket? Yeah, and I know yeah. it's going to happen. Um, I do too. I do too. But the first one we let through Road Warrior. Yeah. Yep. Um, in this one, I will say I'll go first. After I watched Beyond Thunderdome, because I didn't have the problem that you guys did, I was like, I really, really like this movie, and I like it. I think almost as much as Fury Road. I think. And then I watched Fury Road and I was like, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think the ideas in Thunderdome are great. Execution mm-hmm. is not as good. Execution in this movie is insanely Perfect. good. It's Perfect. one of the yes. greatest action movies ever made. Yep. Period. Yes. And I mean yep. execution and everything, not even the action. Like, like delivering on the the world showing us the way milk has got like everything in it it's, it's, all, it's tasteful too it doesn't yeah. even feel like an r-rated film which no. goes back to the last conversation we had about the last movie which is kind of counter counter to that i guess but yeah i mean i would let through fury road for sure yeah me too uh fury road so that means it's fury or fury road versus the road warrior and i honestly do believe that that would be a difficult decision for I'm Jeff doesn't sorry, get to Jeff. say nothing. <laughs> me three. Yes. What was okay, your that's a, not me three. It's a, whatever. It's the good. guy, the guy, the guy who was like, I kind of hate the half, the second half of. <laughs> we fair. knew what your result was. We did. Be, we did. That's sorry, fair. we jumped the gun. <laughs> okay, so what we have here is Fury Road versus Road Warrior, which is really the way it should be, right? I mean, these are the two best films, I think. Maybe not, though. Maybe not in Chuck's mind. I do think the general public would probably pit these two movies against each other. And I th- I do think that you probably would have more people that chose The Road Warrior than you would think. But for me, personally, it's Fury Road. Fury Road is the crown jewel of this series. It is a masterpiece. It's five stars. Yeah. Uh, Fury Road for me, too. Um all the same things that Chuck and both of you have already said. It's, it's a masterpiece. Um, but in the consolation game, I have Mad Max beating Beyond Thunderdome. Um, I just, okay. it's just okay. the second, the you second, the half, Road Warrior the, or, in the, in or the, the bronze the medal match, in the bronze medal match, in the bronze in the, okay. medal match. In the third yep. place, third place is, is Mad Max <laughs> just because I, I, it's, I'm so discombobulated by the second half of, of, uh, Beyond Thunderdome that I just, I would almost, I would almost give it a marginal fail that the second half is so discombobulating for me. Chuck's brought me around. I, I'm, uh, I'm feeling Thunderdome. Yeah, I think it's I not think- the, I, I, And I will also say I don't think it's a bad movie at all, and I do appreciate the thought that it is you know, the second or third best movie of, of anybody's list. I, uh, I am not just me personally. It's not, I, yeah. it's I think it has a ton of fucking heart and I yeah, did yeah, talk about this last week. And that's what I, pre- it's the, yep. the it one does. Mad Max movie that has a ton of it does. heart. Um, but I will agree with you guys. 
Fury Road over the Road Warrior. Road Warrior is close for me because of sentimentality, because it was the movie I watched as a kid. I loved as a kid, and and obviously Fury Road came many years later. Um, I would put Thunderdome over Mad Max, but yeah. I like, I think all of these movies are good. Yep. Mad Max is the weird one of the bunch, but it's still a good movie. Yep. I, I, I will go so far as to give you my star ratings. Oh, okay. Uh, five. I will give five stars to Fury Road, four and a half to the Road Warrior. Ooh. Four, four stars to Thunderdome. So you really came around. I, I, I actually, I've already rated this on Letterbox. I, I really like Thunderdome. Um, my, my, my issues with the children aside, I really like that movie a lot for a lot of the reasons that you have, you have um, articulated Chuck. And then I would give three and a half to to Mad Max. Yep. I can't remember what I. I, I, I think I think that Thunderdome is so goddamn watchable. I've watched Thunderdome. Three times in like the last 18 months. I don't know why, but I have. Dang. Yeah. I like it. Susan you was like, You don't need another rewatch. I was like, Hey, you want to run a movie outside to Susan last summer? And she was like, Yeah, let's watch Thunderdome. I was like, Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it's just one of those movies. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say the five to, to Fury Road, four and a half to <clears throat> Road Warrior. Um, Three and a half to Mad Max and two and a half to Thunderdome. Okay. I, I guess argue. I won't argue with that. I guess I'm I'm very close to agreeing with you, Jason, because I know Fury Road is a five. I did not put one in for Thunderdome, but I like it as much as Mad Max two, if not more. I gave Mad Max two a four and I gave Mad Max a three and a half. So okay. it's gotta be five, four and a half, four, three right. and a half. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. So we're probably simpatico. Yeah. yeah. On the margins anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was yeah. fun. This yeah. was, it a, was fun a lot of month. Fun. You know what? Man. Let's do another theme. Let's do another oh. theme month. Oh, shit. Really? We're going to leave March <laughs> Madness. We're going to go <laughs> ape with April. April. Let's go ape. Let's, Let's go, go ape. ape. Planet of the Aprils. Yeah, we've got, uh, yeah, starting next week on April 3rd, we are going through the classic. This ain't no original, April Fools. Yeah. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> uh, we're going to go through the entire uh, original Planet of the Apes saga, yeah. all five movies. Now, you might notice that there's only four weeks in yeah. April. We're going to do something we haven't done in a long time on this show and talk about yeah. two movies in one episode. Yeah. Not that we, I mean, how many fucking movies have we talked about this last couple of weeks? Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to kick things off next week with 1968's Planet of the Apes uh, from a script by Rod Serling. Yeah. Yeah. Have oh, you yeah. Guys, uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about the adaptation. Um, I have actually read the original novella. Oh, wow. You read a book? Yeah. Well, what? I was in high school. But, yeah. <laughs> it was Planet of the Apes. I mean, if, you, if there's a book that I'm going to read, it's Dracula and Planet of the Apes. And I read a there book. There you go. There you um, go. Were you like, this damn dirty book when you were oh, done it's with a it? Great, it's actually a really good book. It's really this kind of quite a book. dirty book. <laughs> um, so anyway, Planet of the Apes. That's terrible. Starting, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, starting next week on uh, Wednesday morning, Planet of the Apes. Go to filmseizer.com. Guys, I don't know if I've seen any of them other than the original. I don't know. I think I've seen some, them all. We're going to have some interesting conversations. I think I've, as seen, the, as I think I've seen. I think I've seen like bits and pieces, right? Because these movies are always on TV. But I can't tell you that I've ever had a cohesive viewing of any of these movies other I, than the original. I kind of can't <laughs> wait to talk about the third movie because and that's you're gonna hate one of them. You're gonna no, hate that's, one that's of them. the one I oh, think he's I'm, gonna I'm, hate. I'm excited. I'm excited. Although he may love to it. hate it. He may he actually might. love it. He might. Guys, we'll see. We'll see. It's, we'll it's see. an interesting series. It's an interesting series. I'm I'm ready for it. I'm I'm okay. here for it. Yeah. Well, uh, so go to filmseizure.com, find out where you can follow us, where you can subscribe to the show to get the episode and everything. Um, speaking of April 1st, that's Monday. And you know what's on Mondays? 
April Fool's. Monster Mondays? That's exactly right, Chuck. Get out <laughs> yes! of here, Jason. You lose. <laughs> um, this upcoming Monday, same place, filmseizure.com. You can listen to my episode of The Night Walker. It's a really, really cool little uh, movie with Barbara Stanwyck. It's okay. Good. All right. Um, yeah. This upcoming Friday at my website, bmovieanima.com. I have a review of 1976's Drive-In, a movie I think both of you guys would love, actually. It's a very, very nice little sort of American Graffiti ripoff, but actually some really cool stuff going on in there. Wait, what is it again? Drive-In. Drive. Oh, oh, not Drive-In Massacre. No. Drive-In. Drive-In Massacre other... sucks. I'm sorry. I don't no, like that yeah, no, I know you're not going to Drive-In. Yeah, okay, Drive-in. cool. I, I would recommend it to both of you. Okay. Um, so that is at uh, bmovieanima.com. Read that review if you would, please. Thank you. All right. All right. We are going to leave the wasteland. We're going to go into a different wasteland. Yeah. We're, st- we're keeping it. Zone. We're keeping it. We're, we're, we're keeping it pox eclipse next well, month. It's a little apocalypto bringing back uh, Mel Gibson's directing <laughs> credits. Um <laughs> So it is still a little bit apocalypse for a couple of movies, and then we get a interesting third, and then into a different type of a dystopian. I'm, I'm not getting really excited for this third movie. Let's now. do it then. All right, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go see some apes. So uh, until then, <laughs> I am Jeff Arbuckle. I'm Charleston Morston. <laughs> I'm Jason Oliver, and you have been listening to Film Seizure.